everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. This week we're painting another model from Massive Darkness by Simon Games. This is the Orc Flayer Minion. This week we're going to have the Game Warrior or Austin back painting on the channel. That's awesome, helping me out, helping me get more content out. I'll put a link in the description below for his channel if you want to go and look out for some of the stuff he's done. Also, don't forget to give him a big thumbs up below. Let's keep him coming back. It really helps me get more content out. He started off by priming this model in matte black by the Army Painter. He's going to use all paints by the Army Painter. He's a big fan of the Army Painter paints, so in this video you can follow along if you've got that set. I'll also periodically maybe try and throw in some other brands if I can think of them off the top of my head. He's using Fog Grey by the Army Painter, and that's for painting in this orc skin. So that's quite a light bluey grey. Uh, that's the, I mean, the these orcs look blue on the on the artwork, which is... Which is weird, I always thought orcs were green. Do I not know my mythical creatures well enough? Maybe that's the case. What do you guys think? Are they normally green? Have I just made that up? But I thought it was interesting. It's blue, it differentiates from the goblins in the game, so that's cool. Monster Brown's next, and this is for painting on the, the orcs' uh, sort of loincloth and furs. So, so far he's just been using his regiment brush, and you can see that's making quick and easy work of, of this model already. Um, he's watering down his paints. You can see you can see as he's applying them, they're fairly thin. Uh, you need to keep them lubricated and apply multiple coats if necessary. I think that's sometimes forgotten in these videos that I do often myself. Uh, Austin will have done some off camera uh, just to save save some time. Really, not better than seeing the same color over and over. That was pixie pink, and that's just to paint the orc's tongue, sort of mouth area in a light pink. Leather Brown's next, and this is to paint in a couple of satchels on the back. There's no artwork for this, so, you know, you can do them whatever colour you like, but making them as realistic as we can, we're mixing in some browns. Oak Brown, so third brown by the Army Paint. This is quite a dark brown. This is similar to the sort of Mournfang Brown by Citadel, or towards sort of charred brown. Um, it's not quite as ready as that by Vallejo, and that was for his um, sheaf and another one of his bags. Then it's skeleton bone, and this is to paint on those bones around his uh, his neckline. I'm also going to do his teeth and his uh, fingernails in this one. So switching down to the detail brush for this, it's a little more fiddly work, and obviously Austin here has finished the skin, so doesn't want to accidentally get any of the skeleton bone all over that. There's also a little thing on his leg, this sort of rib cage that's wrapped around his thigh. So we're doing this in the same colour as well, trying to trying to match it with the artwork for you. I'd also paint it on a couple of those arm bracelets that he's got in, in this same colour. In the artwork, they look a sort of bone bone colour. Austin chooses not to do that. Obviously, it's his model. He can do whatever he likes, and it's nice to see a little bit of variation from time to time. But I'm certainly going to mention it and chastise him in the commentary for his videos for not keeping with the artwork there. But you guys do what you want. But... Austin chooses gold, and I, I would just stick to the artwork and put some bone on two of those bracelets. So we're just watching him touch up those bits there. And it's finally finished. It's quite a slow bit, because obviously he's using the detail brush. So it's brain matter beige next, and this is going to be to paint in the sort of bandages around both of his, his shins and his, his ankles. Just while I'm watching this footage, I notice Austin often has quite a lot of paint on his brush, and it goes all the way up the bristles to the ferrule. And I don't do that, and I think I would recommend you don't do it. Just try and keep the paint on the tip. Now, obviously, that's allowing Austin to paint a lot faster, and you just have to keep going back to the paint, but it will damage your brushes, and I think Austin gets through a lot more brushes than I do. I've had the same army paint and brushes for around a year now, and they're just starting to wear out, but I do take fairly good care with them. So he's on to Greedy Gold next, and he's going to be painting on all those rings that are sort of pierced into his skin as well as two of those bracelets. Now, I think those are the two gold ones from the artwork. I will let this go eventually, uh, but the other two I would do in bone. He's also going to be doing the hilt and the pommel. I know so, so many weaponry words now, thanks to all you awesome commenters out there letting me know how to talk. So, yeah, both of those are in gold. After that, he's going to take out weapon bronze. I don't have this colour. Um, I'd be using the bronze that's Vallejo's. Um, but he's giving him two blonde, blonde, two bronze blades there. So quick, easy work there, regiment brush. And then he's going to be getting out a different gold. This is bright gold, and he's going to be painting in those other two, two bracelets that I've banged on about enough times now. So do as you please, Austin. You've done it wrong. 
Moving on to another grey, this time it's uniform grey, this is sort of the filthy suit of my set. I think they're the same colour just from the zombie side set. Also there's plenty of Vallejo lights, you just want a light silver for this one. And this is to paint on the orc's belt as well as the, the handle of his dagger. Ash grey, so the third grey we're going to be using here. And this is a fairly pale, well very pale grey, so I'd need to use filthy suit mixed with some white for that. And with that, that's the whole base coat done. We're on to the wash, the, the shading now, and Austin's chosen to use the soft tone. I think this is close to the zombie shader if you've got the zombie side set. Um, and he's just doing the one coat all the way over the model, just dulling him down completely. And then we're going to be on to highlighting. So just taking out that base colour that we started with, that fog grey. And this is to highlight all of his skin. So you're going to be, he's already using the, the detail brush. You're going to take some care here. He's only going to do a single highlight. He's not, he's not, he's not bensoning this job, uh, but he is going to highlight all of the skin back up uh, very, very carefully. So you can see he's point, picking, picking. He is picking out all of the raised parts of this orc. So that was his sort of kneecaps around his knees, uh, the back of his hand and his fingers. He's now onto the back and he's painting in each individual muscle bringing the original colour back through and just making it stand out and making it look 3, 3D really, uh, leaving the, the shader in the shaded areas which would be the recesses where the shadows are cast and the muscles and the, the light doesn't quite get to it as much. So we're just going to watch Austin paint tiny bits of orc for, for a while. This must be the, the slowest part of, of the model but he is only doing one highlight. I think myself, I'd after this I would uh, I'd go and mix in a tiny bit of brain matter beige into this into this blue and just catch the very very tips of everything so I'd, I'd put a tiny tiny bit on all the very edges of each part that he's painting back in now um, obviously you could have you could stop at any point so you could have just done the base coat maybe that was enough for you for you uh, you could have then added the shader maybe that was enough for you but if you fancy highlighting go on to highlight it depends how skillful you think you are and how much effort you want to put into these things uh, obviously a lot's gained by doing all three steps but time wise it, you know, it eats into time it's considerably slower doing the highlighting than any of the other parts so you know you've got to pick and choose you can you can use the which parts of the video you're interested in and and skip over other parts so looking back at the model you can see the blues really coming back out now so Austin is just up to doing his face now I'm painting back in the top of his head and his ears uh, his jaw and his nose and that's the skin skin finished a little bit of ash gray and that's to highlight back up that that grayer part on it on his chest and his belly so just painting back in that exactly the same as the skin it is still part of the skin it was just in a different color that's how he looks in the artwork he's got a funny colored tummy he's also going to mix in matte white and ash gray 50 50 one to one ratio and that's just to highlight that up a little bit more. It wasn't popping enough for him with that. So he's just catching the very edges of each muscle with that colour. So highlighting the skeleton bone with skeleton bone and matte white mixed together. 50-50, one to one ratio. Take one blob of matte white, one blob of skeleton bone. Give it a good mix. And then just paint the edges of all the original skeleton bone areas. So that's the bones on his jawline, uh, his teeth, and any fingernails or toenails you can see poking poking out and that's just to give give the edge a little highlight as though the light's reflecting catching the edge the most don't forget to highlight up that rib cage that's on his thigh i keep overlooking that that's such a weird thing such detail i've never i've never seen a model wearing a rib cage as sort of armor or decoration before but maybe but i don't follow fashion and maybe i don't know what i'm talking about maybe maybe people in the street are rocking these sorts of things animal rib cages on them and i just i need to go outside more He's on to highlighting the fingernails, as I mentioned previously. So just a little tiny dab on each fingernail. After that, he's going to be taking out the brain matter beige once more. And I missed that when we did the base coating, but it's also done the, the top of the sheath for his sword. And then, yeah, he's just painting in a line across each bandage. So he's leaving the shader in, in between each, uh, each wrap of the bandage. So it's giving it a nice 3D look. Uh, making it pop, pop on the raised parts and it's really really starting to stand out now and look awesome. Uh, highlighting up the loincloth or this uh, this fur that he's wearing. This is using Monster Brown which was the original base, base coat colour 
Uh, he's using the detail brush again, so he's been quite careful, and he's just going to go through here, much as everywhere else, and just really catch all the raised parts. I think on the back here, I'd be whipping out my dry brush, and I'd have done this first, just so I could touch up anything I, I miss with my dry brush, and I'd just scrape the dry brush across there, and it would make that fur pop really, really well. He's going to use leather brown, which is the same as the base coat, and he's going to highlight up all those satchels that he painted. So just painting the edge of all of those satchels. And oak brown mixed with leather brown 50-50, and he's going to paint around the very edge of the sheaf there, just to give that make that stand out a little bit better, as well as that satchel on the back that he did in oak brown at the very, very beginning. And you can see those st satchels now sticking out, standing out independently of each other. It looks really good. It's a nice little bit of detail painting them in different browns. Uniform greys back out, and this is to highlight up the belt once more and the handle on his on the dagger that's attached at his waist. So just giving that a nice highlight along the edge. Weapon bronze is going to be mixed with plate mail metal, so that's silver and bronze 50-50 mixed together, and that's to give a highlight to to the to the sword uh, you can see him doing here. I think if this was me, I'd just use bronze for all the bits he's doing now, so I'd be painting back in all the raised parts just with normal bronze, and then I'd use this mixture just to paint down the, the centre of, of each of those blades, just to make the very centre pop out more than the rest, like it would do. I mean, it's it's the shiny bit, right? It's the closest bit to the, to the light. But that's just me. What would you guys do? Let me know in the comments below. Bright Gold's just out again quickly now, just to highlight up those two bracelets that he did in Bright Gold at the start, and then back to Greedy Gold, and that's just to highlight in all of those rings and the hilts and pommels of all the swords, as, as well as the two bracelets that he did in this gold. So that's just catching all of the edges of all of those places and just making the, them stand out a little bit better, bringing them back to looking a little cleaner. So like Austin here, you really want to be using your small brush, your detail brush here, and you want to take your time and just try and catch the, the top edges of all of these items. This is where if you do slip, you're gonna have some comedy gold on on the on the orc's chest, just a blur of that. Obviously, don't forget if that does happen, just wet your brush and flood the area, get it nice and wet, and then slowly just work that paint back off of the model. He's also painting in the belt buckle. I don't know if I missed that in the base coat, but that's important. This he definitely didn't do, so he's he's adding some, um, what do you call them, like the buttons on sat on the satchels. That gives them a nice little bit of detail. Really makes them look a lot, lot better. Demonic yellow he's going to be using, and that's to paint in the orc's eyes. So he's giving a little blob on each eyeball there. And then a little tiny bit of dead black for the pupils. And that's the orc finish. That's completely painted up looks very very cool so if it was my models I'd now be painting the base light grey so that's the filthy suit just to sit with all my other minions that are going to be painted in, in the same colour. Austin for this video has gone a little bit further he's going to show you what he's doing with his models and it's pretty cool and certainly worth looking into and thinking about so he's got he's bought some blue plastic crystals which I'll uh, put a link to in the description below and as you saw he was just using a pair of tweezers attaching putting some super glue onto it and then applying that the flat edge to the base like that and giving you a nice little show of this crystal popping out of the ground like that just making the base a little bit more interesting after that he's going to use agril and earth which is what i use for all my arcadia quest models if you've not seen that already uh, you're missing out on all the cool arcadia quest ones definitely check out ignos that's one of my favorite models ever and that was the one from last week uh, so you're just seeing him use the regiment brush here applying it generously as I do on the Arcadia Quest models, uh, getting quite a thick layer, sort of half a mil to a mil thick, and applying that all the way around and up the side of the crystal he did there, making it making it pop and look like it's bust, busting, breaking out of the ground. And then he's just going to use dead black, just touch up that base and paint around the outside, just to bring the focus back to the, the actual model and away from the bottom of the base. And that's the Orc Flare completely finished and based. Two hours, 47 minutes, quite a long time, especially for a mob. Uh, you've got how many of these? 12 or something to paint. So obviously take what you want out of the video and it's better to have more detail for you to pick and choose from. Let us know what you think about the base. I thought that was pretty cool. And don't forget to give Austin a big thumbs up so we can steal him back to our channel. <laughs> anyway, pip pip cheerio. Thanks for watching.